Now we'll have a special coverage on this and we'll put this to discussion. First, let's get some update from Mona Kandil from Ramallah. Mona, tell us about uh, the Palestinians' reaction to this. Well, senior Palestinian official Dr. Hanan Ashrawi, a member of the PLO's executive committee, wrote on Twitter immediately after the declaration of this uh, agreement that uh, Israel got rewarded for not declaring openly what's been what's been doing to Palestinians illegally and uh, persistently since the beginning uh, of the uh, occupation. Uh, she also said that the United Arab of Emirates has come forward with its secret uh, dealings and normalization with Israel. Uh, Hamas movement in the Gaza Strip also uh, said that uh, uh, the deal of uh, the Emirates is simply a stabbing in the back of the Palestinians. Palestinians who have repeatedly called on the Arabs uh, to stand by them and to back them uh, in a way or another to force Israel not to uh, not to uh, annex uh, parts of the occupied uh, West Bank. But it seems that according to Trump now, these uh, relations and the, nor the normalization of relations between United Arab of Emirates and Israel would uh, postpone the annexation uh, of the uh, of large parts of the occupied West Bank for uh, a period of time. Okay, thank you very much for that, Mona. Now, from uh, Rhode Island, uh, let me invite Vladimir Goldstein, lecturer at Brown University. Uh, good to have you with us, uh, Vladimir. Uh, so how do you look at this? Because uh, we have some uh, uh, a veteran Palestinian negotiator, a member of the executive committee of the Palestine Liberation Organization, she has tweeted and said that the UAE has come out in the open on its secret dealings. So normalization with Israel, please don't do us a favor. We are nobody's fig leaf. This is what uh, the way she has reacted. What do you think has happened? Anything new? Yeah, I think it's definitely something new is happening, but we should uh, look at this from perspective of various uh, various participants. It's a big deal for Trump because you know don't forget that you know this is we have election in the United States very soon, and Trump's positions are not very strong. There is you know COVID nineteen. There is not a good economy. There is like uh, constant failures uh, internationally. And for Trump to declare that he uh, brokered some kind of a deal in the Middle East, especially with such important player in, in, in the mind of the United States as Israel, that's a big deal for him. It's a very big deal for Netanyahu, uh, Israeli you know, leader, because he's also like at a very shaky position. There is endless protest in Israel against him. He's been bowed too long. He's uh, accused of corruption. So they can uh, tell their own constituents that we accomplished something. This is the third uh, uh, deal in history with Arab, uh, Arab countries, and we d did some kind of, you know, agreements. We uh, promised not to uh, get more territory in terms of West Bank and so on. So I think uh, in terms of these countries, that's important. In terms of uh, stability of the region, in terms of secu securing uh, a peaceful life for Palestinians, in, so in terms of the whole comprehensive approach approach is probably not much. But what we, we should stress, this is probably the beginning. What, what, what needs to be uh, done, and I'm not sure United States can be trusted with it, that every participant has to be sitting at the table and negotiate. We do know, no matter how you slice it, that uh, even a bad peace is better than a good war. So I think mm -hmm. only from the perspective of peace and negotiations we should pr proceed. But this negotiation table definitely should include not just these countries who feel mm -hmm. we negotiate with each other and we ostracize Palestinians, we'll push, push away uh, mm -hmm. Iranians. That's not, uh, obviously it's not a comprehensive deal. But mm -hmm. you know, we can view it as a start and we can, we can view it as a temporary victory for these uh, leaders. I I, honestly, I don't know much about internal politics of United Arab Emirates, what exactly they're trying to accomplish. What, what, but in terms of Israel and, and United States, their leaders uh, might, might consider it as a victory. Mm -hmm. But okay, it's like yes, temporary but, victory. It's a month. Vladimir, mm, Vladimir, one side of the story is the Palestinians. It's not an issue between the U.S. and Tel Aviv. You know, it's not Washington Tel Aviv issue. It's uh, Israelis I, I, and the Palestinians. What, what does it have in it for the Palestinians? They are part of the conflict. 
I agree with you, and I think definitely somebody a uh, somebody has to represent them and argue their case. But it should be everything you know should be included in, in negotiation, and there should be a sort of compromise. At least from the surface of this agreement, we see that Israel said we are not going to annex uh, West Bank. Maybe next step will be when we're going to return something. But you know there should be kind of a give and take on all, on all participants. So maybe as a, some kind of a pattern. But definitely it's clear, as I said, it's a victory for Israel. It's a victory for the United States. It's obviously not a, a, you know a, not a victory for Palestinians. They feel that yes, maybe part of the West Bank not be annexed, but uh, the mm -hmm. rest of the situation is dismal. You know Gaza is dismal. Many other places are dismal. But you know that's as so I what's, said. What's the use of the plan then? It's got nothing what? for Palestinians, huh? Well, I think it's probably the only good thing about it is maybe Trump will have a desire to push forward and will start stop the bullying Iran, stop bullying you know Palestinians, and it will sort of push because every every political leader probably wants to enter history as a peacemaker so i think that's 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 the beginning it's, there's nothing uh, particularly realistic and good for time being but at least it's better than start sending uh, bombs and artillery and shooting each other across the border okay vladimir the main question is the plight that the palestinians have been going through you know what's going on in the gaza strip it's called the largest open air prison you know, and recently also, Israel, the siege has been going on there for long years, and it's getting uh, worse and worse. Uh, fuel is not going to be allowed there, and this is what also Tel Aviv doing, in addition to what we're talking about. Normal Gaza, is a very, Gaza is a very complicated thing, but again, my feeling is, that, as I use the word, comprehensive agreement. It's it, it just definitely, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Israel and U United Emirates cannot solve this problem. It has to be Middle Eastern, you know, kind of solution where every country sits there and discusses and and, and solves the issue of, of Gaza. Of course, it's like it's a wound. It's a wound in humanity, if you wish. Nobody nobody approves of the of, of the of the situation. But you know, I think what is better is slow negotiations than drawing a line in the sand and start sort of you know military aggression, which we know, unfortunately, uh, doesn't solve much. Uh, and Vladimir, where are the Palestinians in those negotiations? It's Washington, should, Tel Aviv uh, speaking to each other. They definitely, uh, you know, Palestinians should be involved and Iranians should be involved. These are very important players in the whole thing. And we know that, you know, United uh, Arab Emirates and Saudis and Israelis and America, they look very, you know, kind of askance uh, and with suspicion in Iran. And that's that type of deal, you know, it's not realistic. It's like, you know, having a deal in Eastern Europe not considered in Russia. This is, you know, this is this is not a comprehensive solution. But maybe as a, as a temporary, as, as a stepstone, as a pattern for further negotiation. But there is no doubt about that, that, that Palestinians should be negotiated. But I think it, each side should be ready for compromise. Okay, thank you much for that. Let me go back to Mona Kandila, correspondent in Ramallah. Mona, as, as a Palestinian, how do you yourself feel? Do you think anything's going to change for, for the better for Palestinians uh, by just hearing this normalization, official, of course, normalization of ties between some Arab states and uh, the Tel Aviv regime? Well, the Palestinian leadership itself uh, suspended uh, all uh, security coordination with the Israelis and uh, stopped all uh, contacts with the uh, American administration. Now, of course, uh, when they do so, they will not be, uh, uh, they will not accept uh, any Arab nation or a Gulf state to have relations with Israel. Anyways, as we are speaking now, we have received that the Palestinian leadership uh, called for an urgent meeting in now uh, mm -hmm. to be uh, chaired by President Mahmoud Abbas in order to have a, an official uh, response on the uh, the declaration of uh, uh, the uh, normalization of ties between United Arab Emirates and Israel. Okay, so we'll definitely come back to it later time and get an update on that. Thank you very much. Mona Kandil, our correspondent, join us from Ramallah, and also Vladimir Goldstein, lecturer with Brown University, join us from Rhode Island on this special coverage.